Hello and thanks for tuning in to my YouTube channel, Pickleball Pick Apart. My name is Rory. I take pickleball games off of YouTube and I pick apart the play on the court. Watching my videos will help make you a better pickleball player. In this video, the question of spin. Should you put spin on the ball when hitting a shot? I think there are advantages of putting spin on the ball, but I also think there are times when putting spin on the ball can get you in trouble. This game has perfect examples of how spin can work and how spin can fail. If you're going to put spin on the ball, you have to decide if the advantages are going to outweigh the disadvantages. There are some very important lessons to learn by watching this video, so check it out. But first, a big shout out to Huddy Boy Pickleball. That's the YouTube channel this video was posted on. They do a very good job of posting videos like this, so check them out sometime. Let's go. Here are the players in the near court in the orange. You have Wendy. In the blue shirt is Pam. And in the back of the court in black is Alicia. And Karen is in the blue top with the orange shorts. And this is the player I am going to focus in on. Again, her name is Karen. Sometimes she puts side spin on the ball. Sometimes she does not. So I'm just going to point out how effective or ineffective her spin may be and see if it's really worth doing. I know she's a very, very good player, even without the spin. The question is, does she need spin to win games? We're going to find out, so let's go. There's a serve. And the very first shot, what happens? She tries to put a tremendous amount of side spin on the ball, and the ball goes out of the court, and she just made one of the worst mistakes a pickleball player can make. That is, she missed the return, she gave her opponent a free point, and all their opponent did was serve the ball into the court. Let's go take a look again. Here comes the serve. And I wonder what you watch the side spin. She tries to look at this. Look at this. Boom. Right out of the court. The question is, is that necessary? So I'm going to count how many times it helped and how many times it hurt. That's one time that it did not help. And that's just a really nice shot by Wendy. Alicia just hit it too high up in the air. That time she did not put any spin on the ball. Oh, she tried to put some kind of like bottom English on it with her paddle like she's holding it now, trying to put the spin on the ball. And what happened? It went right into the net. So, so far, 0 for 2 when putting spin on the ball. I know she's a very good player. The question is, does she need to do that? A little firefight there and a really nice backhand flick. There's that spin again. That time it did work. It had some effect as um, Pam was not able to get that back. Let's go back and look one more time. And I will say something about this spin as well. Here's the serve. Watch the return. Here comes the spin. It's going to kick to uh, Pam's left and she could not get to it. So whenever that happens, at least when I am playing and I am playing against a player I have never played before, and I see that they put spin on the ball like this, I may miss it once. Sometimes I'll miss it twice. But after that, it really has no effect because I know how to adjust to it. The question is, will Wendy and Pam be able to adjust to the spin? So I will give Karen credit for winning a point by putting spin on the ball. So far, one good thing, two bad things. No spin that time, just a flat serve, a nice high flat serve. And a third shot attempt to drop it into the kitchen was a failure for Alicia. You got to get those third shot drops in. Nice point here. Hit a little bit too high, and <laughs> Alicia put that away. There's another attempt to put some spot side spin on the ball on the third shot, 
and Karen hit it into the net. So that's three bad results by trying to put spin on the ball when perhaps she does not need to do so. And she just missed the backhand there. Let me show you what happens here. Here's the first shot. Now the third shot, she's going to hit a third shot drive. Okay, now when she's hitting this, she is hoping that Karen just pops it up. Pam will be able to put it away on the fifth shot. So here comes the third shot. Here's the fourth shot. And look at this. Karen hits a really nice shot into the kitchen. And Pam is just not quick enough to go up and get it. I'm thinking she was thinking that Karen was going to hit it deeper. Uh, Karen did not. And she just... She's hitting the ball while she is moving. Her feet are not set, and the ball goes right into the net, which usually happens when you are moving forward. Always remember, feet before swing. You have got to get your feet set. There's that spin again, and she misses yet another one. So that is four missed shots because Karen is putting spin on the ball, side spin on the ball, so far, it is not working out for her. She has made four mistakes. It has worked once. So the negatives are four. The positives are one. And that ball is hit out. Now, I'm going to back up here, and I want to point something out that is very, very, very important. And you can see it quite clearly as to how Wendy is hitting her forehand. And I'm going to show you this right here. I'm going to stop it. Here comes the ball. Look, here's her forehand. I want you to look at her paddle position. Look how broken her wrist is. You may be able to get away with that in tennis, but it's, I guess it's okay to do, but it is not the optimal way to hit a forehand shot in pickleball. Again, look how broken her wrist is. Now, there are lots of instructions on YouTube on how to hit a forehand. I'm going to go to one right now. The guy's name is John Sincola. He is a professional pickleball player. He gives lots of instructions he has a fantastic YouTube channel. If you want to get some good advice, check out his YouTube channel. It's just titled John Sincola. And I'm going to go a video in which he shows how to hit an effective forehand in pickleball. And this is not it. So let's go now and check out the difference between what Karen is doing and what John advises to do. Here's John right here. Now, I want you to watch what he does. He is simply dropping the ball and hitting it with his forehand, and I want you to pay close attention to his wrist position. Did you see that? Was there any break in his wrist at all? No, there was not. Let's watch it again. Here we go. Boom. Now you can see it sideways. No wrist bend whatsoever. And as, as you will also notice, is that his paddle and his arm do not go behind his waist. It's not a full swing all the way back here like a tennis swing might be. It's just all the power is generated from here going forward with the wrist like this and obviously not bent. No spin on that serve. As you can see, Karen is just kind of changing things up. And that was a great shot right there. That was not side spin. That was top spin. Watch how good this shot is. Watch what happens when the ball comes over the net. It dives right at Wendy's feet. And the reason that happened is, let's go back and watch. Watch how shallow this return is. Boom. It's right there. It's not even halfway across the court. It does not give um, Wendy enough time to get up and get established at the non-volley zone. And she's trying to hit this ball moving forward. Again, just a great job by Karen seeing that Wendy is not quick enough to the line. She hits it right at her feet, and Wendy has no chance to get that ball back. 
So I'm going to call that spin on Karen's part, and she won that point because she had the top spin on the ball. So four bad things have happened with the spin and two good things. There's a spin again. There's a spin again. And what happened that time? Pam could not handle the spin. She has not adjusted to it. That is the second mistake she has hit, hitting a spin ball into the net. So four to three now. Here comes the spin serve again. The question is, can Wendy handle it? She cannot. So tied up now. Four points gotten because of the spin and four points lost because of the spin. So evened up now. Nice job. And that ball was hit out. Let's go back and see if Wendy breaks her wrist again right here. I'm pretty sure she does. And here we go. She broke it there. Let's look here. Look at her wrist. Look how broken her wrist is. Also, she does not have a continental grip. She has that frying pan grip with her finger pointed on the paddle. She breaks her wrist right here. She flicks her wrist, boom, and it goes right out of the court. That is just not how you are supposed to hit a pickleball or how to, how to use your paddle. Breaking your wrist should not be done, especially when you are at the non-volley zone. Nice point here. That's just a great shot. Fantastic shot by Karen. The little lob right there. And neither one of the players ran back to get it. Third shot coming here. Third shot drive. Pam's just waiting for it. Karen could not move up. She gets stuck at the uh, service line. And Wendy and Pam get that point. I'm going to stop. I'm going to say it one more time. And this is the last time I'm going to say it again. Look at Wendy's wrist. Watch as she swings through right here on the return. Here comes the third shot. Look at the wrist. Look at her wrist broken right here, broken even more right here. And here it comes. Just not good. Hit it to the net, and I think the game is just about over. I really hope you're getting something out of watching this video. I think what I am pointing out is pretty obvious. There's that spin serve again. Another spin, and she missed it that time. So that is five mistakes that Karen has made by putting spin on the ball. However, it has helped her on four shots. So five to four, negative to positive. And the truth is she is an excellent player. I don't understand why she is putting so much spin on the ball. I think it affects her negatively. I don't think she needs to do it. I think she is a good enough player without it. So my advice to her would be, get rid of the spin and quit making the unforced errors because that is five unforced errors she made by putting spin on the ball when she probably did not have to. Goodbye. And that's the game. The team in the far court of Alicia and Karen defeat Wendy and Pam. A few final comments. There are two things you should take away from having watched this video. Number one, should you put spin on the ball? If you're going to, be sure to ask yourself if it's worth it. The only way you will really know is if you keep track of it, and sometimes that is hard to do in the heat of battle. You probably assume it helps, but that is not always the case. The second thing to take away from this video is try not to break your wrist when hitting the ball. 
You saw what Karen was doing incorrectly as to how John Sincola and other professional pickleball players instruct on how to hit the ball. So that's it from Pickleball Pick Apart. I really hope you learned something from watching this video. And if you did, I hope you take the time to like it, subscribe to my channel, and click the notification bell so you'll be notified when I post a new video. Again, my name is Rory. As always, thanks for watching and see you on the court.